In 2016, I approached Beth King, who's a friend and writing colleague, and said, let's do a horror film. Two little dots, now one day, over the hills and far away, Mama Duck said, quack, 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 but none of her little ducks came back. both had screenplays in development for years and I said let's just make a really cool indie little horror. We were kind of going, mm, should we do a short first and then try and make an amazing feature and we thought oh let's just screw the short and go straight to the feature. We met then twice a week for about two or three months and we didn't know what idea we were going to write. We just said let's brainstorm ideas. So we just kind of started having workshop kind of sessions where we just tried to figure out what scared us. Touch points I guess of what scares me I know is like creepy children, especially creepy children like laughing with mirth Ugh. and kids going missing. Her mother, Janet, made a frantic call to police claiming the nine-year-old had been taken from her bed. Looking at our favourite horror films and what it was about them that not only scared us but actually made them engaging as films in their own right. So. Um, we're a big fan of like The Exorcist, The Ring, um, The Grudge. We came up with about seven or eight ideas for, for feature films and the surrogate, or what became the surrogate, was the one that we got most excited about. We can't remember the moment where we came up with the hook of the story, which is that the ghost rebirths. Um, but we know the moment we came up with that, we're like, we're really onto something now. This is really exciting and fresh because it's always about how you give the audience what they like in a genre, but something that was original. We, we just hadn't seen that idea before. To go through labour without being pregnant, it's unheard of. We went a lot from a character point of view, which is kind of how I like to start all projects because you're telling the protagonist's story. And it wasn't just both going, oh, that's good. It's like, you know, Beth will convince me how to go with that. Or I'm like, this is why I think we need this bit out of here or around there. We had um, these index cards, had key events, the turning points that we have to go through. And we used a lot of whiteboards, just kind of pinned things up in the order it should go. We really liked what we had as a concept, but bits of the story weren't working and we decided to change the entire setup. So we went back and the original setup of the story was about um, a mother, so it was Nat and Rose, and they were going up to the country to visit their estranged mother and grandmother. But then we sort of thought about it and went, oh, it's not a very horror idea um, about a family coming together. So we sort of went, what about if it's a family getting ripped apart? Happy birthday, dear Rosie. Happy birthday to you. Dave sees things in the direct way a director sees, so he sees the shots and those kind of things in the realism of how we can shoot it. Um, but then he also has a writer's brain. I come at a lot from an emotional character point of view, and um, I feel like we kind of meet at a good spot where um, it's a combination of how the actual picture's gonna see, they're gonna look, and the emotional journey involved. Once we got to the screenplay stage, Beth writes very quickly in those drafts and so she's really good at just starting to spit out scenes. So some of the scenes we sort of wrote together, other times it, she would do a pass of the draft or a pass of scenes and then I would do a pass of them. That was about two years of writing on and off. Reading the screenplay, I remember I was just sitting there on, um, on my phone after work one day just going through it and I didn't leave for two hours because I just had to finish it. I couldn't actually stop. I loved the relationship between the mother and the child. Like to me, it was sort of very, um, reminded me of like Babadook. It's a horror film, but for me, that relationship was kind of at the heart of it. I started joining some dots and wondered whether Dave should speak with, with a friend, Confer Cabo, who I knew had already backed some horror films. I just went in there to, to ask his advice and I thought he'd produced these films, who's actually the executive producer and had financed them. And, um, but I still didn't know that at this stage in the meeting. And we just really hit it off and had, both had this deep love for, for horror films and ghost horrors and Southeast Asian horror films. And he just then asked what my script was about. 
I said I pitched it to him and he said, oh, that sounds interesting, can you send it? He shared all of the different um, versions of the scripts. Later that night he said, let's meet again next week to discuss it. I like to take risk and once I trust someone that can deliver it, there's no point for me to, you know, get myself entangled in it because I'm, you know, I know my strength and directing is not my thing. All the way through the process he's been supportive of every aspect of the production. He's given some ideas, he gave some really good ideas on casting. A um, few little script notes, but uh, gave me total creative control. I think it's been a very good, easy kind of, um, yeah, involvement. I'd never cast children before, let alone directed them. And David told me, I said, have you heard of not, don't work with animal children? You've got three of them here. One of them, one of them's headache. Three of them could be really difficult. The first one who came through was Ellie Tevelis. She was really good at Ava and Lisa. I think he's the kind that chases sheep, you know, like on a farm. And his floppy is. The tag says Indy. He likes you. Mummy left him alone in the bathtub. So I pushed his head under, and when the bowl stopped, he turned blue. Mummy lied to the police, but then I made her more angry, so she drove me to the country. She understood the key aspect to Lisa. She's a child doing horrible things, but she's feigning innocence. And that was really difficult to explain to children, you know, how do you explain to 10 year olds irony? Um, but Ellie just got that. The word came back that she actually really wanted to play Lisa, but she was happy to do either character. And I thought, great, I'll put her in as Lisa and keep looking for Ava. We also found Rose on that day. We had a great little actress who I thought would be good for the role. Um, she was pushing the age bracket a little bit, but we were only a couple of months off shooting, so that wasn't gonna be a problem. So when we went into the first lockup was one of the worst moments of my life because all contracts become vo void in a pandemic. Those first few months in particular was a very long period. It was just like we might have lost the finance on the film and it was terrifying because it might take another year to find it. It might take four. It might not ever happen. I can't sum up how grateful I am that he just, he sat out that period when the global economy's collapsing and he could have bought his finance, but chose not to. There was an aspect of that role where, where Rose is all about innocence, but um, the actress was, you know, really amazing actor, um, but she just didn't have that, you know, that 10 year old innocence. You know, she was, she was um, becoming a teenager. It was certainly the most unpleasant aspect uh, of directing the whole production, which was to have to recast that role. We thought we'd seen every child actor in Melbourne and we had to really you know, redouble our efforts. We had another call out and um, I just remember this moment when, you know, I was, uh, you know, a bit sort of sitting on the edge of my seat in terms of, are we going to find our Rose? I was told it was a scary movie and I was like, Ooh, spooky <laughs> and I was really excited and so I started learning my lines and then I did the audition and I just remember getting the audition tape from Taisha and um, I just like felt like this instant like oh thank god we've totally like we found her talking to someone won't help how do you know Nothing works. Moving house didn't work. My uncle Bill gave it to me because I love dinosaurs. Oh, which is your favourite dinosaur? The Micropachycillosaurus, because I was the longest name. <laughs> it's a video assignment of our family tree. I have to interview you, Nana and Uncle Bill. What if the mum tries to get me? I really liked her performance style. You know, it needed a lot of work, but you could see the raw talent and potential. Kesty and I met in a park with Taisha and her mum. What was really interesting about Taisha, she's very confident and she dresses really fashionably, but the key part to Rose's character, she represented innocence. She wanted to climb the trees in the park and it was just seeing that innocence in, in her 
in that moment that I went, yeah, she will really work for the role. We even have, da 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 da, tap and go. Wow. You don't need a receipt. Thanks. When I first read the script, I thought it was really, really well written. And I've been wanting to do another horror film for a long time and I was waiting for something that really spoke to me. It was my day off and I, I, I spent most of the time at the home, mostly. Can anyone verify that? Okay. Where is this going? Please answer the question. Yes, my daughter. And I also was drawn to the gift the groundedness of the characters, I think, and just the reality that it was based in and then all these really unreal things happening to these characters. What did you do with the baby? <laughs> there is no baby. Natalie, I don't want this to become a criminal investigation. It wasn't like the normal route that actors do, which is to audition for a role. So it was quite lovely. I was on a director's board of the Victorian College of the Arts and on the board was the producer of The Surrogate. Yes, yeah, so I asked her to be involved and, and she wanted to see the script. I started to read the script and I'm a third into it. I go, I really don't want to read this script because I'm so scared. And that was a really good sign. And she loved the script. So then we caught up with David and. Uh, uh, in the cafe again, it's always through coffee. It's, it's just uh, the amount of coffee we, we consume is quite a lot. And the director approved of me, which was fantastic. And then I was offered the role. 